So how do you fire someone? Not something that us business owners want to do. So stick on all the way to the end of this video because I have Josh here. He is the best-selling author of this book called The 100 Myths of Entrepreneurship Versus the Chainsaw. And guess what? He's also Canada's top leading CPA and business consultant. Josh, in over a decade of business, has worked with thousands and thousands of business owners, 96% of which have failed because they believed these myths, and 4% of your business owners are successful because they listened to you and they overcame these myths. So the myth here, Josh, is that you can avoid firing people. Is that true? No. You, can't, you cannot avoid firing people. You're going to have to fire people, right? Yeah. If you don't fire people, I mean, let's, let's look at the organizations that d don't fire people. Right. Government. <laughs> <laughs> they don't fire anyone. How do they do that? Well, they overpay everybody. Yep. They expect very little work. Yep. And if there's any sort of friction, they try to transfer them to a different department and they're perfectly willing to yeah. keep a you know, uh, unproductive employee until retirement. That's right, and they take a consensus before they make a decision. Like it's, it's just, and if you want to run a profitable business, you know, you're not going to be able to avoid firing people, yeah. right? So, these people will, will become toxic. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. And the situations will escalate. Mm -hmm. They won't get better. They will get escalate. It will actually cost you more exponentially more in the long run by not firing a bad employee. In fact, 46% of new employees fail within. 18 months, and this is quotes from, from Forbes, you know? So uh, eventually you're gonna have to fire them before they quit, right? Or just they're gonna quit on their own. They'll run amok in the business, yeah. right? And so they're they're gonna hijack the business, right? Yeah. I, I mean, you know, in, in our business, I know this video's gonna come out in uh, a few months, so don't, um, I, I had to fire someone recently because, yeah. you know, we have a very, everyone shows up at 8 a.m., right. right? In yeah. our business, right? And you know we had a, a employee who mm. you know, we worked very hard to have that on time culture. Yeah. An employee was consistently late. Right. Consistently late, until the point where it was, hey, um, if you're late, we're going to have to take action. Right. It's late again. Suspended him. Mm -hmm. Sent him home and suspended him. Wow. And then he was late again. Mm -hmm. And then he was late a second time. Mm -hmm. It's at that point you have to realize that either a you're going to fire him, or yeah. B, everyone is going to see that they don't have to be on time anymore. Correct, because the D players will drag down the Bs and the Cs and the A players, right? They will, right? Yeah. It demotivates them. And so, had, had to let them go, right? Yeah. Because it wasn't an issue that we were, you know, that we were flexible on, right? Yeah. So, you just have to identify what those are, and you can't let them get out of control, right? Mm -hmm. And that situation actually went really smoothly right we didn't blindside the person we had called them in multiple times on our you know our our, our mondays that we have allocated for that mm -hmm. we had you know explained the rules very clearly we had given chances mm -hmm. we had taken subsequent action yeah. right you know and it was a, a clear decision right yeah. and so you know but if i didn't do that hey that huddle that we have every morning, mm -hmm. we, I preach you know, on every, every one of these videos that we yeah. talk about the morning huddle, it wouldn't be possible if people didn't show up on time. Correct, right? Yeah. That's true. And so, you know, it's something that it, it kind of, it had to be done, right? Yeah. And every once in a while, you're just gonna have solutions like that. If you try to avoid it, it will get worse. Right? Yeah. So, you know, it's really important that you realize that that's a myth. Yeah. Okay, and you know, Josh, in all these videos, by the way, if you haven't seen some of the other videos, check out some of the playlists up there. We have all different topics here. But Josh, what are some actionable, practical steps that business owners can do? Uh, what are the warning signs they can look for? Um, you know, and, and what are the steps to take in order to fire someone? So first of all, don't blindside people. Yep. Avoid blindsiding people at all costs, Don't make emotional decisions, right? in other words, right? Th that's right, right? Because you have to take up accountability. Whenever it comes time to fire someone, mm -hmm. it's your fault. Right. Okay. You hired them. Yeah. You had the opportunity to train them. Yeah. You failed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can tell you about this person who didn't show up on time, but ultimately, it's on me. Mm -hmm. You know, we hired him. I had you know, uh, coaching meetings with them to try to coach them up. It didn't work, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe if I would have said the right thing, maybe it would have worked, right? Right. Maybe if I would have had the right situation, it would have worked. So ultimately, you need to approach it from that perspective, right? Okay. That it was your fault. Yeah. That doesn't mean you shouldn't fire them. That yeah. just means that, like, when you're fired, them you need to have that kind of grain of humility. Yeah. That ultimately that situation mm -hmm. was your fault. To add to that, we do talk about this in other videos as well too. But ultimately, a lot of business owners will avoid firing someone 
simply because you don't have someone to replace that person. So you put up with their BS and you put up with their substandard of work because you also failed to do one of the critical things that Josh talks about in the business and that is to have a consistent pipeline of recruitment and hiring going on at any given time so that you don't have to end up with the scum water. You can actually take the best picks. So if you're interested in finding out more about that, go watch the other video up there. We'll put a link in the description as well too. But Josh, just touch on that a bit about if you had choices, if, you, if your staff knew that you, know, you had a whole line of resumes and mm -hmm. people come in to see you on a regular basis, how would that change the situation and your decision-making process to fire someone? It, it generally reduces the number of times that you have to fire people, yeah. right? Because when they see that you have other applicants who want that job, they know that your standards are not negotiable. Yep. There's other people who actually want that. So when you bring them in for those coaching sessions, they're they're more uh, you know they're more likely to work, right? Yeah. And if it's the wrong fit, a lot of times they'll just get themselves off the bus, and you won't have to you know you won't have to fire them. Correct. Because they know that it, you're you're not you don't have this negotiable ambiguous standard. You yeah. have your standard, and, and that's what it's going to take okay. in order to stay there, right? And so you know, number one, we talk about hey, just. Don't blindside people, right? Yep. Try to get them in, try to talk to them about it. Don't be derogatory or disrespectful or condescending to them. Be respectful, right? Make a good faith effort mm -hmm. to allow them to rectify it yep. whenever possible. Now, there's some scenarios where you should fire them right away, right? But those are very few yeah. and far Stealing between, right? or something like that, yeah. So, you know, something crazy, right? Yep. You have to understand what led up to that point too, right? Mm -hmm. There's probably some fault on your in your point where and you probably let a disengaged person stay on if they're stealing, right? Right. Yeah. Sometimes it's completely unavoidable, right? Yeah. But do what you can not to blindside people. Then at the same time, you talked about having the you know the ability to recruit. Mm -hmm. Fire people on your time. Yeah. You fire. When is it best for you to fire them? Correct. Right. Yeah. I mean, to be you know clear, to be blunt, you know, there's been times in our business where we said. That person is dead to me. Mm -hmm. I look around the table at my managers. When is it best for you guys for me to fire them? Mm -hmm. Because someone else has to pick up the slack in the interim, right? Yeah. What do our candidates look like, right? Right, right. And so that's you know kind of when the decision is made. Is sometimes people, you know, you you might make up your mind that you're going to fire them. Yeah. It's just you have a deadline in mind that works best for you. There's no problem with that. It's yeah. your business, right? Yeah. Um, and so you haven't blindsided them. Yep. You fired them on your time. Okay? Yep. Now you're ready to actually fire them. Right. Okay. Do not do this by text or email. Right. Like just don't do this by text or email. It's like, yes. okay, they're, they're going to come in. Have them come in for their regularly scheduled day of work. Yeah. Okay. Now, when you bring them in, you're just going to tell them straight up, you know, have them come in, have them sit down. And the first sentence you should leave with is, I'm gonna have to let you go. Yep. You know, I'm gonna Don't have to let you bush, go. Don't be around the bush. Just yeah, immediately just start. They have to understand that that is the tone. If you lead up to it, now we're gonna have a discussion or an argument. Just, I'm gonna have to let you go. You know, if the reason is, you know, in this case uh, with the person being on time, it's like, hey, you know, we talked about being on time here. Mm -hmm. It just seems like that's not a good fit for you. You know. I think you're gonna come to some other firm, and you know they're they're all gonna show up around nine-ish, mm -hmm. and that's gonna be good with them and for you. And I think you'd be a really good fit. And you know th this guy was a good guy, right? And yeah. this was like you know we'll be no problems being able to you know use us as a reference. It's just yeah. like this is the one thing it just doesn't fit in here, and we wish you the best. Yeah, and it went exceedingly well, right? Yeah, and and that's how it's you know supposed to go, right? Now you called them in for that day, so you know what the right thing to do is pay them out for the rest of that day. Right. You know, you're they're done immediately though. You don't let them done stay immediately. Up for two weeks or nothing like no that. No two weeks. No, you know, they're they're out the door. Yeah. Um, you're gonna watch them when they go out the door because you never know what's gonna happen. So yeah. you're gonna put management in strategic locations when that's happening, right? Yeah. But you know, it's 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 time for it's time for them to go. Yeah. Okay. So when you when you have that person now now you're going to pay them out for the rest of their day you're probably only legally obligated in most provinces to you know to pay them for three hours right mm -hmm. you can cut their shift short don't do it just pay them for the rest of the, the day, day. You, yeah. you called them in they'll be like why didn't you email me They'll you won't have that because if you would have emailed them you just get a bunch of back and forth email and you'd hate your life so don't yeah. do that just call them in and pay them out for it. it's going to cost you yeah. one day okay that's part of it right the second part is firing someone with cause or without cause. Right, okay. This is where it gets sticky, right? Mm -hmm. Now we can do this because we have contracts. Right. right. We have contracts that specifically identify the termination provisions and the termination pay, especially 
what it's going to cost for me to fire someone without cause. Mm -hmm. Now in this situation, it could very well be argued, I had cause. Yeah. You know, we had corrective action before, we even suspended before, yeah. right? And they had subsequent chances. There's no point, right? Yeah. There's no point. We're gonna pay them their required severance to fire them without cause, right? Yeah. Now this is a, a luxury of pricing your services. If you have your numbers figured out, you know Correct. this happens once in a while, right? Yeah. And so then we pay them out the amount without cause, right? Okay. And then usually we're going to pay them another week in exchange for a release. Really? Okay. Another week in addition to what we're required for the severance pay, right? Yeah. And that's just an exchange for the release. Not that there's anything that they could litigate anyways. Yeah. It's just they would be unsuccessful in litigation, yeah. right? But at the same time, the costs of going through that are, are, are exorbitant. Can right? you explain to the business owner what is the release that you're talking about? So release is, it's a, it's a legal form release that says that, hey, I agree, I've been paid out fairly, you know, yeah, uh, I don't, don't have any further you. claims against yeah. this business, right? Yeah, there's gonna be no, uh, yeah, no claims and no uh, feeling that they were done wrong and nothing. And some, some people will say, I don't wanna sign my release, or I'm gonna have my, uh, it's like, hey, it's like, no problem, you can have whoever you want looked after it, yeah. look after it, if you sign up by Friday, I'll pay it out, if not, you know, offers off the table. Yeah. You know, because you're not doing anything wrong, you already have a contract, you're paying them exactly what it says in the contract. Correct. You're just giving them another week, you know, as a sign of goodwill, yeah. basically, right? Mm -hmm. You're trying to lead them in a good, you know, a good situation. Yeah. You know, ideally they can go and they can find another job, right? Yeah. And the idea is to let people go while you can still be a reference for them. Right. Right? Yeah. Whenever possible, it's, it's not gonna work all the time. I, you know, I wish it worked all the time for me like that, but it doesn't, you know, sometimes it's, you, know, you let it go just a little too far and you can't be right. Yeah. Ideally, if you let them go early enough, mm -hmm. you can still be a reference. Yeah. Because you had one or two, and they were critical things, and they yeah. were absolutely imperative to your organization, but they weren't. You know, I, I you know, had to terminate people because they weren't very good at task switching, right? Yeah. They're gonna to go to somewhere else and work on one task all day and they're gonna be perfectly fine. Yeah, just, they're a good person living, but just they couldn't do in this model. In right? that model, right? Yeah. And so, you know, talk with your advisor on this in your specific situation, but a lot of times, they, you know, especially in Canada, we can do that. We can lay them off for shortage of work. Yeah. We just don't have the work that they are good at, they are That's qualified right. to do, right? Correct. We have other work that they're not qualified to do, but like, we don't have that, right? And so now they're getting, you know, their required severance, they're getting yep. paid out for that day where they got called in to get fired, basically. Yep. They're getting paid out their required severance, they're getting an extra week, and they got a soft landing of employment insurance after, right? right? And they got the idea that they, they can still be used as a reference. It's like, yeah. that is the textbook way how yeah. that can proceed. It keeps right? them without having grievances or wanting the retribution against you, and you know, both have one parts on good ways, yeah. right? It's a win-win ultimately. And that's, that's the way it should be done. Yeah. So if you found this video helpful and beneficial, maybe in your next fire, let us know how it goes in the comments below. Josh and myself actually do read all the comments and we do answer them ourselves. Don't forget to check out the other videos in the playlist. Pick up the book from the description below and we'll see you in the next video.